scientists have discovered a material that is doubly superconducting. It is possible because it's a special kind of superconductor where the superconductivity is topological, that is, it's confined to the surface. But what does it mean to be topological or doubly superconducting? And how can we even measure such a phenomenon? Let's discuss it. A superconductor is a material that exhibits zero electrical resistance. This occurs due to the formation of Cooper pairs, which is when two electrons act as a single boson, effectively eliminating electron-electron interactions in the material. This means that there's no loss of energy from the flow of electrical current through the material. Superconductors come in two distinct types. The first is made up of single elements that are conductive at room temperature like aluminium and are referred to as type 1 superconductors. Type 2 superconductors are instead made up of alloys like yttrium barium copper oxide and typically have a critical temperature that is much higher than type 1 superconductors. They also exhibit a mixed superconducting state when the diamagnetism of the superconductor can be locally overcome and vortices can form from magnetic flux. While recently it has been demonstrated that room temperature superconductors are indeed possible, they currently only exist in high pressure environments, thus limiting their use in everyday life. Despite this, superconductors are already used all the time, both in science and in the medical industry. For instance, MRI machines use superconductors to produce the large magnetic fields that they require. But to extend superconductors to more regular use, we need to overcome some of their limitations. The holy grail in this pursuit would be a room temperature ambient conditioned superconductor. Likewise, finding superconductors that can remain superconducting, even under extremely large magnetic fields, is a constant pursuit. Both goals have thus far been elusive. But one way forward may be to use what is called a topological superconductor. Typically, superconductivity is a bulk property of a material. That is, the superconductivity exists throughout the material. However, there is another variant of superconductivity, which is topological. Topology is a field of research that looks purely at the surface of an object. Here, the object can be simplified down to its most basic form where all other shape is disregarded. That is, it is the study of geometric objects that are preserved under continuous deformations without closing or opening holes. Making a cow topologically equivalent to a sphere and a mug topologically equivalent to a donut. There are different forms of topological superconductors, but essentially they are materials that have a bulk response that is not superconducting, while the surface has what is called edge states that allow superconductivity to form on the surface only. Here, the topological superconducting forms due to the small connecting lines or edge modes that, which bridge the band gap, where the band gap is responsible for the bulk insulating state of the material. This is a completely different phase of matter to superconductivity. That is, the phase space between the two states is not overlapping, distinctly separated. A topological superconductor cannot be continuously deformed into a bulk superconductor without closing the superconducting gap. Because topological superconductivity is confined to the surface, this type of superconductivity has some potential advantages in terms of being protected from some defects that plague standard bulk superconductivity and as such is a hotly pursued topic in physics today. Additionally, this isn't the only phase of matter that is topological. Another commonly discussed form is a topological insulator, which is insulating the bulk while being conductive on the surface. So what was so interesting about these latest results? First, they found evidence that uranium ditelaride is a topological superconductor. While not completely conclusive yet, this could be one of the first confirmed topological superconductors. Secondly, they observed that the material became superconducting not once but twice. Now, this may sound counterintuitive. For starters, if something is already superconducting, then how could you even observe the next transition? Normally we would measure the resistance of the circuit, and if it was already superconducting, then the resistance is zero. Instead, the scientists have to look at a different mechanism, the specific heat of the material. Specific heat 
is the amount of heat that must be added to one unit of mass of the substance in order to cause an increase of one unit in temperature. When a substance becomes superconducting, we see that there's an increase in the specific heat. That is, it requires more energy to heat the sample as some energy has to be used to transition from the superconducting state to the regular state. When the system continues to cool down further, we should see that an exponential K that leads to a lower specific heat than if the material was a metal. Here the scientists observed two distinct rises in specific heat, indicating two separate superconducting transitions. Now this is possible with topological superconductors, as they have different versions of superconductivity and thus multiple transitions can exist. This is one of the reasons that the scientists claim that this could be a topological superconductor. Either way, superconductivity is an interesting subject and has much left unexplored. Maybe topological superconducting is the future of superconducting technologies. We'll just have to wait and see. Thanks for watching. Have fun. And see you next time.